Being on record and having the big deal, you know, the big record deal. That, that's a long time, though. Why do you think you survived uh, 15 years through all the various musical changes, not necessarily for you, but just the times of the music business? It depends on who you ask. If you ask Ed, he'll probably give you one answer, and I'll, I'll give you another. Okay. But well, I think one of the things that makes this band uh, click, I think, is that even though the four of us are a lot, they have a lot of similarities, there are a lot of differences, too. Some of the stuff Ed listens to, I can't stand. Oh, yeah? Like know? what? Tell me. Well, it gets too technical. Ed likes to listen to uh, Alan Holdsworth and, and the, the real guitarist, guitarist type guys, you know, really don't have a clue about what, how to put a song together, but what they play is really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Alan. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, so you're okay, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but the point is we're all, you know, we're all we have different tastes, mm -hmm. and when we get together, it, it just kind of melds, to, melds as one, and I think that's what makes the sound unique you know we I, I, I think it really is more that what we do it's rock and roll but it comes from the heart you know it's it's really a soulful kind of thing I mean, it's 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 our lives you know we we, we play music it's all we do it's like we'll, we'll be on the road for 10 months and come home and go I need a break after a week and a half <laughs> Alan and I are calling each other going Come on, man, we've got to play. Cause it's the only thing we know how to do or the only thing we like to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's really the root of it, you know? Talk about the uh, high points and low points of the, the run, the Van Halen run. I don't think there's any low points, really. Uh, without getting too spiritual or philosophical, you know, everything happens for a reason, more or less. And I think if you don't have the bad things that happen or the things that you don't, that didn't quite happen as planned, then you don't learn anything, you know? Then you just, you just more or less... Well, you do your little thing, and that's that. So did your parents raise you to think like that, or did you guys develop this? No. My mom wanted us to be... She was the authoritarian. She was the authority, yeah. you know? Do this, do that, do this. She, our, our dad yeah. was a musician, you know? He says, hey, come on, you know, let's go play. Just did every... And yeah. I think Ed and I got the, got the vibe really early on in life, you know, four or five years old, and uh, he would take us along the clubs, and you kind of you get the feel of what what music right. is really all about. It's not as sterile as we had to put let's on make fake a video. Mustaches like yeah. this no, one? Ed, no, Ed, Ed, we were five years old. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> and in Holland they're a little bit more lenient about carding it, the, the thing. But it, it showed us more the uh, the the human aspect of what music's all about. So when you were little, did you guys ever play with your dad? You know, just like around oh, the house yeah. in the garage or whatever. There's there yeah. a place on Coenga Boulevard called Continental Club. Still I think there. it's still there. Yeah. And it used to be a, a jazz club, and my dad had a band called the Rhythm Airs. The Rhythm Airs. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, every now and then the drummer couldn't make it, and Al would sit in for the guy. And Al had long, bushy hair, you know, almost like a fro. <laughs> kind of deal. And he would slick his hair back with like talus or whatever you put in it. That's no good. And, <laughs> no, he was like, well, how old were you? 14 uh, years old? My first paying gig was I was 13. Yeah, 13. Wow. It was, it was a great it was, way. It was hilarious, but he played great. It was it was totally happening. See, but since your father was in the business, you, I guess that's why you guys are so you know you came in, you said hello to everybody, very down to earth, and I guess from an early age you realize that yeah, it's a great profession, but it's work, and I appreciate my work, but it's a job. You know, Dad went to work, he, right, went to, he exactly. played a, played and, a gig, and he came home. And I think it's the uh, I think it's the uh, the the anomaly, if you want to call it, of this rock and roll super group status that the people sometimes achieve that's kind of misleading because it is one-on-one -on -one. if it wasn't for the record companies and if it wasn't for multimedia you would literally be going from city to city to play every night different places then just wouldn't be as many people i think we're fortunate that we have this avenue through records to have more people be able to to hear right. what we think is really great music and now you're doing your first live album yeah when did you decide to do that and, and whose idea was it Kind of, uh, it's like this. <laughs> it was his idea. <laughs> no, he did it. <laughs> no, it just kind of happened. Uh, it started off uh, near the end of the tour. We did a, a, a Westwood One radio broadcast. And Alex and I and our live engineer mixed it. And did a pretty we, good job on yeah, it. Yeah, we were quite happy with it. And so we said, hey, why don't we dig back to some old tapes mm -hmm. and see how the stuff sounds. And uh, the stuff sounded great. So we said, hey, let's do a live record. You guys really compliment each other, uh, and in terms of, I mean, actually giving compliments to the other one. Do you ever fight? I mean, your brothers, come on. Oh, we fight. <laughs> oh, it doesn't get out of hand because uh, the bottom line is, I think, if it really, 
really went to the point where we're trying to kill each other, so to speak, we'd both be on the floor. Because neither one's going to give up. Well, but I mean, you know, I don't mean literally, you know, fist fights necessarily. Oh, well, that's, that's what I thought you were talking about. <laughs> but hey, we, we, we can talk about those. They happen. See, but what's really uh, funny is, like, well, we argue. you got to pull your punches we're basically, up, It's ba basically about venting. About the same thing. Yeah, we're basically <laughs> venting frustration about, oh, why did this happen? Well, I don't know. Why did this, you know, it, it's, it, we're both basically yelling at each other like a mirror kind of, kind of thing. When Extreme Close-Up returns, the other half of the Van Halen band talks. And a little later, we'll have an exclusive look at some rehearsal footage. But in order to really get to know Van Halen, we decided to break it up and start out with the brothers. Few rock guitarists are regarded as highly as Eddie, and older brother Alex provides the driving drum beat that fuels the music. Make no mistake, though, Van Halen is not divided among family lines. You know what I find interesting is that you guys uh, really put forth a, an effort to make sure that, that everyone knows there are four guys, you know, four members. The, the four-headed monster. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You know, it's not just one. Why, why is that important to you, to make sure that it's... Because there's four people in this band, and we equally do what it, what it takes to make it happen. Take anyone away, and it would be different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For better or for worse, it just it just wouldn't be the same. I think Ed and I grew up on the Beatles, you know, and I thought of, of, I found it fascinating <laughs> how Ringo Starr was <laughs> not getting all the girls. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it was the incident. And he makes a living hey, hitting things out. with his neck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I found it really fascinating how they were equal. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, some people, let's face it, are born <laughs> with gifts. You know, they are just. They have talent. They have uh, they have something. I don't know what it is. I could never write music like Ed, you know, or sing like Sammy. Yeah, well, but, wait a minute. The, well, the, you the never know. You just played me in your car. It's been damn that. You understand what I'm getting at, though. Yeah. Uh, seeing four guys on equal ground was really it it it, it, uh, it impressed us. I think. And um, we, we don't. You always want to emulate people who you admire. You know, so we really don't step on each other's toes. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody takes care of their own little thing, and then when you stir, take the big stick and stir it up, it becomes Van Halen. Right, right. It's also, I think, a matter of mutual respect, you know, as human beings first, then musicians. Well, it's like, I, 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 I wouldn't touch the drums, you know? But Just like Al wouldn't play guitar. But you guys used well, to. Well, yeah, yeah, but that's why we swapped. <laughs> so, you know, what, so you've got to tell me the story, how that happened, see, because... Okay, we, we came here when I was six years old, and we were being trained to be classical pianists and that kind of deal. Uh, we got into Dave Clark Five and the Beatles and we were, when I was 12, I think. And Alex uh, stopped playing piano and started, my mom got him into playing flamenco guitar. And I was into drums, I that. so I bought, a, I bought a drum kit and uh, uh, I had a paper route to pay for the kit. It cost like 125 bucks or something like that. And uh, uh, while I was out throwing the papers, Al played the drums and he got better than me. Said, okay. Oops, I can't say that. <laughs> Did that make you mad? Uh, I was a little uptight about it, but once I, I found out that I was actually better at the guitar than on drums, and that Al was better on drums than guitar, it worked. And well, it didn't take a genius to see what Ed could do with a guitar. When I played it. didn't it, take well, a genius to see what Al could do with drums. Because <laughs> actually, it, it, it hit me like, oh, God, he can play Wipeout and I can't. Now, you, you guys uh, make the other guys, Sammy and Michael, feel like brothers as well, don't you? Well, I've known Mike for about 18 years. You know, it's it, it's kind of, again, it's, it's, it's a human relationship first, then the music, you know? If you're, if you're together for a reason and you're trying to get something out of it, you know, I love you because you're a great singer, yeah, and the moment he hits a clam, you know, he's not doing so well, he's saying, yeah, let's get somebody else, and then it doesn't work, you know? It's, then you're really out to get something. Um, the idea is just to hopefully, if you're inspired or you think of something that you want to share with other people, then you play it and people get off on it. Mm -hmm. And having a friendship amongst the four and then doing it together, is, it's great. Now, w when you're up there playing on stage, you know, when you look over and you see your brother, and this question I want both of you to answer, uh, when you look and see your brother up there with you, how does that make you feel or what do you think? Very, about? very strong vibe. I don't uh, think about it. To me, it's it's uh, it's a given. It's oh a given. well, that's kind of what I meant. Yeah. What, what I'm saying is that team said the same thing. But no, you, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'm saying <laughs> is that if if I if I'm on stage and I turn around and I see I don't see Al, there's a problem. I can't play with another drummer. To tell you the truth, I really can't. We're definitely connected. 
Because you guys have a rhythm that nobody else can have. Well, that's kind of, it's supposed, that's that's kind of unusual. Boys, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, what's unusual about, about, uh, about this band is most of the times when, when you refer to the rhythm section, it's the bass and the drums. Mm -hmm. With us, it's, it's usually, or it is, guitar and drums. drums. And the bass kind of lays a foundation. Yeah, it's more like a, a basement, so to speak. Coming up next on Extreme Close-Up, we'll check to see